If extreme weather events like Hurricane Irma are the result of climate change, then whose fault is it? And if we can answer that question, should they, could they, be liable for the clean-up costs now? In a paper published today in the journal Climatic Change, Mars Allen, who is a professor of geosystem science at Oxford University, says that nearly 30% of the rise in sea levels between 1880 and 2010 can be traced to products from just 90 companies. Well, Professor Allen is in, our, is in Oxford and in our radio car is Tom Burke, who's a former government advisor and founder of the environmental think tank E3G, or Third Generation Environmentalism. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. And Professor Allen, you're suggesting in this paper that those companies who sell products that cause greenhouse gas emissions now should be paying the clean-up costs of things like Hurricane Irma? Well, what we show in the paper is that it's possible to trace the link and it's possible to quantify different contributions. And the contributions from products sold by a relatively small number of companies are responsible for a large fraction of the damage. Now, what you do with that information, of course, is up to the public, up to the courts and up to the governments. Um, but the crucial point is that if we are in enjoying, we all benefit from the use of fossil fuels, um, but at the moment, it's taxpayers, future generations and the long-suffering citizens of Barbuda that pay for the clean-up costs. But can you absolutely identify where current greenhouse gases are coming from? Uh, where the greenhouse gases are coming from is pretty straightforward. The harder part, of course, is tracing how much of the damage caused by the likes of Hurricane Irma can be attributed to human influence on climate. And that's a, that's a harder problem, but it's one that we're making rapid progress on. And uh, the answer's n not negligible. I mean, human influence on climate doesn't cause these hurricanes in the first place, but it is exacerbating their impacts. Uh, Tom Burke, what do you think of this idea? Well, I, I think Miles's paper is going to help start a very important debate and take it forward. But it's a little bit uh, uh, simple to say that the oil companies' products are what causes climate change, which we've known for a long time and is absolutely right. Uh, and then to say that's where the chain of liability ends. Uh, the chain of liability also includes all the companies that make the products that burn the fossil fuels all of the governments that permit both those companies and the fossil fuel companies to operate, and all of the people who then make use of the products of, of, and of that produced by the companies that burn fossil fuels. So there's a very long chain of liability here. So when you come to say who's responsible for what proportion of the damages, I think, as Miles says, you have a very complicated question about how we allocate the responsibility in society. Now, being able to quantify a bit more precisely both the question of whose fuels and also the question of uh, how much you can attribute any particular set of damage to climate change, all of that's going to help move that debate onwards. But I think the bigger issue is not so much the issue of, in a sense, penalising companies for damages to individuals, as how do you get countries to pay for the, uh, that are for the big emitting countries to pay for the damage that's being done in the poorest countries around the world. And that's not an issue that's going to come to a court anytime soon. Indeed, Professor Allen, in a way that should be easier to do, uh, and yet it's proving a struggle in practice. Well, possibly. I think an even bigger prize, if I might uh, add on to, to, to what uh, Michael Burke was, was saying, um, was is that in the end, I don't like the idea of a future where we just pay to pollute. Um, it is possible to use fossil fuels without dumping CO2 into the atmosphere. And th th we don't do that because it makes the fossil fuels more expensive and there's no downside risk. There's no the, the, a company doesn't run any risk of being held liable for climate impacts at the moment by just selling the product, and we don't run any risk by using them. If we incorporate that risk into the way the whole fossil fuel industry and how consumers use fossil fuels works, then we might make more rational decisions, and eventually we might, just start to stop, might decide collectively to stop using the atmosphere as a waste dump. And that ultimately is what future generations need. And Tombo, do you think that ultimately it will all be quantified like this? And, uh, and I suppose in a trustworthy system, because there's a whole long tail of history that, is, that has got us to this point. 
Yeah, but I don't think we can wait for the courts to get round to sorting this out. I think the fact is that governments can act now to move fossil fuels out of our need to meet people's needs for energy. They can do that much faster than they're doing it currently. Uh, and that way of getting governments to act as take us further down the road. We got onto the right road in Paris, but we're not going down it fast enough or far enough. And that's really a thing for governments to take responsibility for, not for not to focus on com uh, companies so much. And just, uh, a, I just want a brief final word to Professor Allen. Given the models you use, could you point to Hurricane Irma at the moment and say, look, this is how we should share out the costs of the clear up? The crucial point is it could be done in principle, and that allows us to start a conversation about whether there is a risk in using these fossil fuels that we're not thinking about at the moment. As we saw in the financial crisis, allowing the private sector to make unlimited mm -hmm. profits while the state picks up the tab for the risk ends badly for everyone. And we need to avoid a similar you know, global fossil bailout scenario evolving in climate change. Professor Miles Allen and Tom Burke, thank you both.